Rick Riddell is joining us now. This is President Biden uh, just about a year ago, not too much longer than that, last August. Take a listen. What interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with al-Qaeda gone? We went to Afghanistan for the express purpose of getting rid of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan as well as as well as getting Osama bin Laden. And we did. Well, the problem is we didn't get rid of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. Specifically, uh, their leadership decided it was a safe enough place to go uh, head a, hang out and live in the capital, whereas President Biden said reunite with his family. And it's senior Taliban officials, by the way, home. I want to go to Rick Riddell. Rick, obviously, it's great work by our intel community to c- continue to track Zawahiri down. He thought he was in a place where he could he could kind of reemerge and it feels safe. He shows up in Kabul. But what it really tells me is that while we took advantage of of him thinking that I'm finally protect I mean, in a safe place, that he is in a sense the Al Qaeda leaders are in a safe haven, and they will learn from this. Hey, maybe we can't be on the balcony, but we certainly have allies in the Taliban who are going to put us up in their homes and and let us operate. And it's exactly what the t- Al Qaeda is looking for is how to start planning more attacks. They need a place to do it. Let's be clear on what this was. An al-Qaeda terrorist was the guest of a cabinet member in Afghanistan. This is uh, sad. This is outrageous. Think of all of the people in the United States, taxpayers, our soldiers who've been on the front lines. Think of all of the sacrifices that Americans have made over the 20 years of trying to uh, do something good in Afghanistan. And yet Joe Biden evacuated uh, us out in a reckless way. And we clearly see now that those 20 years of trying to do some good was wiped out because of the fleeing that Joe Biden did. Politicians undercut American servicemen, American taxpayers. It's so outrageous to see what's happening. And I I have to say that, you know, Joe Biden being proud that he got 90 percent of Americans out, leaving 10 percent behind, is perhaps one of the reasons why he's got the lowest uh, popularity of any president in the history of polling. Yeah. And and Rick, I would think that this is going to again, they're going to try to use this politically, obviously. Um, And and I just but the bigger picture is, yes, great until we got Zawahiri. But, but the fact that he was back in the capital city, that he's no longer hiding out, that he's not in some cave, that he's that public. And and you got to imagine how many more other Zawahiris are, I mean, they're already talking about who's next in, in the Al-Qaeda leadership. And, and like I said earlier, you know, it kind of felt like we were, we had made some huge uh, gains against radical Islamic terrorism to a point where it was not our top fear all the time in our own country as Americans when we were used to that rash of attacks and ISIS-inspired attacks. And I, I, I worry that this kind of safe place for these bad actors uh, is exactly how we get to that. May not be today, but maybe a couple, few years down the road because they get a place where they, can, they have allies that have a government structure and they can plan. Look, under the Trump administration, we had al-Qaeda on the run. We have ter- terrorists on the run. And in the Biden administration, you have al-Qaeda literally coming back as guests of the Afghanistan government. They are flaunting this comeback. Uh, They are coming out and and signaling to us that they are back and they are in a safe haven and they're celebrating and they're guests. Um, we, We are responding to them really flaunting their ability to have a safe haven. And so this should not be celebrated in any way. It should be a a red flag to what is coming when they are deciding to come out and flaunt the fact that they can have a safe haven, they have a country that gives them aid and comfort, then it's only a matter of time before they make another attack. They're planning it right now and they have safe space to do it, and their network is reconstituting, and this is a disaster for America. Uh, Mark my words, we are going to have an attack because Joe Biden 
does not know how to uh, be a leader and crush the terrorists. He, his weak policies has, have welcomed them back. Yeah, scary stuff. I, I want to switch uh, just a second to Taiwan. So Nancy Pelosi has touched down. Uh, we saw, saw a lot of military action uh, by the Chinese, but but ultimately here, is this a loss for the Chinese that they weren't able to scare her off, and even using the Biden administration, or do you think it just all got so muddled up by the end? What's kind of your take? Look, we we have to get the position where we recognize that we have to have good relations with China. We shouldn't be sticking them in the eye. But right now it's a crisis. They have been allowed to uh, take over our universities. They've been allowed to spy on us recklessly. Uh, we have bad policies when it comes to the supply chain being in China and us beholden to that supply chain. We've got to fix these policy problems. But we also have to recognize that, uh, like Donald Trump showed us, you can be very tough. You can put tariffs on the Chinese. You can demand that they have better behavior. But we don't need to be sticking them in the eye. We don't need to be creating enemies. And I think that there's a way that we can stick up for America without trying to cause wars and conflicts. Finally, it's a big uh, primary day. There's more this week. Uh, uh, what do you? Where would people, if people are watching tonight, what, where, what races are you watching, Rick? Well, I'm in Arizona right now, Jordan, uh, working hard for the four Trump-endorsed statewide candidates in Arizona, Carrie Lake. Blake Masters, Abe Hamaday. These are uh, individuals who earned President Trump's endorsement. And I think it's really important that we get out and vote. So I'm here in Arizona. Hopefully we have a big celebration tonight. I'm watching uh, the Michigan races as well. Missouri, uh, Jesse Jensen in Seattle suburbs is running. I, I really like Jesse. He's a friend of mine. So I'm watching that race closely as well. Awesome. Well, Rick, as always, it's great to have you. Thanks for being able to hop back on with us today.